And we are switching to our next speaker, that is actually Benjamin, who has uh, already entered the discussion. And uh, Benjamin is a software engineer at, uh, I don't even know how to pronounce it, ML. Um, PA, I, I cut out the um, yeah, yeah, the, excla I don't, don't. the exclamation mark uh, at the consulting yeah. uh, uh, company, and you're also working on uh, um, energy efficient solutions for remote sensing for places where you're not able to recharge or, or power the, sy the systems. Yeah, exactly. So I'm basically echoing uh, Jürgen's, Jürgen's talk a bit. Uh, I hope I won't, won't be duplicating, um, duplicating too much. Um, yeah, so, um, as you said, uh, we are also a consulting company and yeah, just, just like Jürgen, we also, uh, add sensors to existing machinery, um, that is, um, customers come to us, they want to get some insights also when things fail or, um, detect leaks in pipes or, uh, monitor the wear on some construction machinery. And so we, we have this IoT toolbox that is based on Riot uh, that we use to uh, provide um, customer-specific sensor solutions um, that will then um, yeah, co collect data, uh, put it in the back end, and then um, we have some, some analytics uh, going on around that. Um, yeah, so these, these, uh, these machineries where, where these sensors are installed, they are often in remote places. Um, hard to reach and uh, so they also need to be battery powered uh, have a good case uh, and um, nobody wants to change batteries and sensors um, so, so we also use something you had say kind of 2.15.4 uh, communication for that um, was right um, so first a little disclaimer because I'm, I'm just a software developer not an electrical engineer so um, my uh, further um, if, if there's some there's some uh, inaccuracies. Um, I want to I wanna, uh, excuse that. Just take everything with a, with a grain of salt. Um, and of course, there are uh, platform differences. So I'm talking also about the SAM, SAM platform, uh, SAM, SAM D51, uh, to be exact. And uh, the way these, uh, these uh, microcontrollers behave uh, during these deep sleep modes uh, always differs between the uh, vendor uh, what they implement, how they implement it. So um, you have to you have to measure yourself with the data sheet to see uh, what your microcontroller will actually will actually do when it's when it's sleeping. Um, if you're just randomly randomly applying stuff without measuring it, you will uh, just end up in chaos. Um, so uh, to, to get a long battery life, it's of course uh, it was important to start with a with a big battery. So we need to have a Quite large battery, so there is everyone's favorite SMR21 for scale, um, and yeah, it's a D cell battery. We can't just use any old old battery for 10 years because most batteries will have a self discharge um, a self discharge uh, rate. Uh, you probably know that from uh, like uh, when the lithium lithium uh, rechargeable lithium batteries. If you put them in a, in a drawer for a year, they will be will be dead afterwards because they will have self discharge. So this battery is actually uh, advertised to, to have a 10 years life. That's also why we can promise that to our customers because they actually tell here, if you draw continuously 50 microamps, uh, you will still get 2.6 volts after 10 years. And uh, actually it's a bit interesting that uh, if you draw more, it might even get some more out of it. But um, if, if you draw 100 microamps, you will get 15, 15 amp hours out of this battery. If you draw more, you might get more out of it, but it will also be, be dead sooner. And another property of these batteries is that they don't uh, provide a lot of um, continuous current. Um, so this one, oh, I, did, I didn't copy it to the slide, but I think it has a, a 200 milliamps um, constant current uh, can, that it can provide, but this will degrade uh, over time as well. So um, if you want to still be able to draw some, some more current after, after 10 years, you might want to add um, some capacitor that gets recharged by the battery on a slow, slow rate. So then if you do some transmissions, you can, um, you can um, <clears throat> get, the, get the current out of the capacitor and not, um, not uh, overwhelm the aging battery. So you get a bit more life out of that. Um, 
Yeah. So um, let's let's go let's go with these with these um, um, five fifty milli microamps for now. We could even go to hundred microamps, uh, giving this this uh, scheme uh, this diagram right about that. Continue uh, calculating that um, so because we we also have to know what uh, what what actually how much how much current can we actually draw. So we said. Um, um, let's start with the uh, with the main processor. Um, that is, in our case, the SMD51. It's actually not a dedicated low power part. It's actually quite a powerful processor. Um, but nonetheless, if you if it goes to backup sleep, which is uh, the sleep mode where everything is stopped except for the real time clock, um, it will will only draw two, three uh, three or three microamps. And uh, we, we lose all the all the RAM contents except for better backup RAM in this mode, but this is actually not a big problem um, because of the because we only take a measurement once a day. Um, so yeah, um, there's, uh, there's no, no we don't we yeah, have no big setup cost. And then then you might notice something interesting in the data sheet uh, that it has a LDO and a buck converter on the on the, on the, on the chip. And you can use either of them, and you will also see that the uh, back converter is a lot more efficient. This is basically a switching power supply that uh, does a high frequency switching to convert from one voltage uh, to another. So this is this varying input voltage uh, that can be from 1.7 volt to 3.6 volts. So you can just use the, the the voltage directly from the battery without any conversion, and they will do the conversion internally. Uh, but we see that the the LDO is very inefficient. Uh, so why would you even use it, right? So if you read the data sheet, uh, you will never get the answer. If you read the errata sheet, you will find out um, that the that the back converter actually interferes with the internal internal fast clocks of this chip. And it's actually true for all the SAM processors. Um, it's also, also only ever mentioned in the errata sheet. So if you enable the back converter with the uh, like the FFL to power it at 120 megahertz, uh, you will just see it uh, spontaneously stopping. <laughs> the funny thing is that also the setting to use the uh, bar converter is persistent across refreshes, not across, uh, like if you unplug it, it will, it will go back, but it keeps the setting in the register. So it just makes for some very interesting debugging because <laughs> um, if you flash the old firmware, it will still not work. Um, and then you unplug it and it will work, and uh, this is weird. But then you read, you read the errata sheet and you find out what is happening. Uh, but this means you need an external oscillator if you want to use a buck converter. And yeah, so these, these are also the um, values for the external oscillator, these uh, 73 microamps. So this is fine, we just add an external oscillator. Uh, that means we can't go any faster with our, uh, our clock frequencies than the external quads and use a 80. 84 megahertz quads or 32 megahertz quads, so it's fine. We are not doing any any big calculations. Uh, also, uh, reading the data sheet, you will find out that um, in, in in deep sleep, only the RTC can wake you, so there are no external interrupts. Um, only, uh, but but the RTC has five pins, can be used as, as temper temper detection pins. Or um, yeah, wake up pins in deep sleep. So you can only, so you, you have to make sure that you um, that you connect your wake up sources to those pins um, if you want to want to wake up from deep sleep. Um, and of course, when the processor wakes up, it will will start uh, booting uh, from fresh. So it's always a fresh um, state, which makes a lot of things actually easier. Um, yeah. So. Um, yeah, they also what you find out reading the data sheet is that in this deep sleep mode, the uh, the GPIOs will retain the configuration they had before sleep, and only uh, when you wake up they will be reconfigured when you reconfigure the GPIO pins. Um, so that means you have to be a bit careful about what you set them before going to sleep. Like if you turn off external peripherals, um, and they will <coughs> um, they will uh, well. Be completely shut off, um, but you still have some UART signal, and the UART is uh, is idle high, so the, the TX pin is on a high voltage level, and now you um, 
have a sensor connected that you completely disconnect from power with a switch or something, you will find, you'll notice that now the sensor will be powered over the TX line, and you don't want that. Also, this, this can work if yeah, this, this can happen if you, uh, if you just have a, your debug UART connected. And um, you, uh, we, we, there, was a, there was a case where, where we had a, a board and, and we didn't, didn't connect the, the power properly. And uh, it would, would always, um, would always uh, crash when it would send some data over the Wi-Fi via the SNAP interface. And it turned out there was no, there was no supply which connected, which there was only the TX line connected and would uh, get the current through the TX line. And of course, not much current, so it would crash. So keep, keep that in mind, uh, what, what the, the, the pins might, um, might be in a state uh, where there is a voltage differential and it will, it will cause, uh, that will that will leak, leak current. Also, same with if there's a peripheral that has a pull up a resistor or pull down resistor, and uh, your GP, your pin is uh, is in the wrong state before you go to sleep, uh, then it will drop current during sleep. Uh, also, as I said, uh, you should measure the current consumption; uh, otherwise, you don't know uh, what it is, <laughs> or, or, or if the things you're doing actually have an effect. But it also means you should not have your debug UART attached because either you, um, you, you might, if there is, if the 3.3 volts uh, TX uh, on, on your debug UART do not match the one on your board, there will be a voltage differential and you will either lose power or the board will be powered over the UART. So you might even see some negative power readings there. It's just weird. So just keep these connected to get, to connect, uh, to get, get proper, um, proper readings there. Um, then you you also want to look at the other the components. Uh, for us, we have this this radio on the on the chip that also has this uh, uh, quite wide input voltage uh, range, so we can again just use the uh, battery voltage directly. And um, with with this, uh, you will notice that in the sleep mode, it, will, it only consumes thirty nano amps, so it's it's pretty negligible. But if it is if you just reset it. Um, it will be in the TRX off state, which draws three milliamps, which is quite a lot actually. Um, in in the RX mode, it will be even more uh, as reduced power consumption mode, where it will do the cycle the um, the R the um, FU, But uh, uh, yeah, so 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 we may, must make sure not not to wake uh, sleeping radios basically. Um, so. Um, uh, yeah, and we have these other sensors like an accelerometer shock sensor and this um, GPS sensor. They're also only consume uh, single digit microamps in, in the low power mode. So adding it all together, uh, we have these 3.3 for the, for the microcontroller itself. We end up around about 20, let's say 25 microamps during, during deep sleep. And we said that we have for 10 years a budget of 50 microamps. So that leaves us with like 7,800 uh, ampere seconds left. So if we if you want to do something else but sleeping, uh, you're doing this napkin math calculation. We can uh, consume 36 milliamps a minute a day uh, with with this with this kind of energy envelope, which is still plenty. So just from a, a from reading data sheet perspective, should be no problem. If we just uh, sleep and then do something for a minute max a day, usually much less than a minute, usually just a few seconds, and. Um, and it should should basically work for that for that amount of time. Um, so, um, what what should the application do to to achieve these uh, these low power requirements? Well, actually, it shouldn't do a lot. Uh, it should sleep most of the time. Um, since we uh, since we reset after after sleep, um, we don't have to worry about uh, runtime power management so much. Um, uh, the, what we basically do is we wake up, take a measurement, then see if we need to uh, send out the measured data. If so, we actually wake up the radio. So we uh, use we don't use auto init, but we use this uh, native init devs, which uh, gives us a, a manual init function that we can call. Then we wait for this uh, event, valid, this address valid event on the on the netif bus that is uh, issued when when a prefix uh, from the border router was received. So we don't wait any, any longer than necessary. 
we send the data, shut out, ra shut down the radio, shut down the sensors. Um, basically, where some have some have some shutdown routine, and then uh, we go back to hibernate um, for the next period, which will be like a day or so, um, or if an event happens from the sensor. That leaves, of course, um, a few possible optimizations on the table, like uh, the time up here layout. Um, we haven't looked into that yet, uh, mostly because um, yeah, we're using this, this deep sleep where we lose, we lose all state anyway, and these wake up phases are, are usually very short. So um, there is not that much to be gained. Um, of course, if there is some more communication, um, uh, then will probably be um, worthwhile to investigate that. Also, um, we, we always uh, start fresh. So um, uh, we always request a fresh prefix from the border router. Uh, and we could actually, if the sensors are moved, we could just store that in the backup RAM somehow. But there's no facility for that yet. Um, that would also solve a bug that currently the border router forget, like, refuses to give a prefix if it's once, uh, if it, uh, if, if it consists, considers the node um, uh, unreachable, um, then it will not, never get prefix again. But yeah, I think this can be can be fixed. Um, uh, yeah, so um, that's uh, that's pretty much a quick quick rundown of, of what what our, our use case and and our um, our um, yeah experiences with this are. Um, and uh, yeah, what, what our approaches are to get these, these 10 years of battery life. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you very much for your talk and uh, for the many aspects you touched. And we already have questions from Michael Richardson. Uh, and one is, this is actually a question to both speakers, but you can start answering it. And this is about, uh, whether you use a mesh network, you're using Ripple, and what, what radio? But you said you, you're using a 50.4, didn't you? Yes, yes, this is Admiral 80, uh, this Admiral, the, the, the new Admiral radio. Uh, here's this, um, uh, this, uh, what is it? Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's basically on the staff board. Actually, it's even two interfaces. It's so a gigahertz one and two from 2.4 gigahertz one. Um, yeah, it's, it's uh, one of these uh, new 802, uh, 802, 15.4 G devices. They have this two kilobyte um, uh, MTU, so we can also send large frames without fragmentation and uh, have have lots of mod modulations that can be used for um, uh, a quite robust and long long uh, range communication. Right, we got some some six to eight hundred meters uh, with it um, on, on the super gas band with actually these. Um, this is our board. We have uh, just some some chip antennas on there. Um, yeah. Um, and and do you use multi? Uh, well, not yet. Uh, it's it's kind of, it's planned to use to use mesh uh, Ripple. Maybe we haven't really looked into that yet. But right now the the uh, applications um, like like with this with a sub uh, range of like six six hundred meters, um, we we don't need it yet. Um, we would probably add it for robustness. And I mean, these six meters are really with the loaded, lowest data rate, so you don't get much bandwidth of that. Um, yeah, uh, so, so no, no mesh yet, but I'm looking, I'm actually looking to Ripple and making it a bit more uh, performant with the link layer um, statistics. Um, it's an old pull request by, by Kuhn. Uh, he, he already implemented it a few years ago, and um, this, is, this is to get proper, proper routes um, after yeah. um, we are not using mesh either so <clears throat> we uh, but we support uh, multi gateway setup so if the range isn't far enough just set up a second gateway third mm -hmm. one or whatever. Are, you, are you using the generic water router for that no it's linux based driver so ah, okay the the router itself isn't right as, uh, at all but, but is it also a six low pen? Yeah. Okay. It has some pitfalls there. It needs cyber discovery currently. That's not nice, but it works for us mm -hmm. currently. Interesting. Um, 
yeah, we, we had noticed that problem that the uh, that that uh, so say that they have multiple border routers or are they all the, all the same address? Um, it, this, the address is randomized by its MAC address. Uh -huh. So, okay. or it's it's uh, from uh, so uh, the border router could com communicate as well. Okay, guys, we are leaving the subject here. So yeah, let's yeah, sure, sure. So, uh, more, energy. Yeah. <laughs> a question by Michael, the next one. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, I actually have two questions. The first one is, um, do you uh, think it would be worthwhile spending some time on um, implementing helpers or designing helpers for uh, backup memory uh, management, like uh, the interfaces for that or helpers to um, allocate some specific things to um, uh, RAM, RAM retention area? I mean, there are helper macros, right? We have this, uh, there are these, um, like there is this um, backup RAM attribute that you can just attach to a data structure and then it will be placed in backup RAM. Um, is that already like, th that's already in place for the different platforms, right? Yes. Okay. So uh, do you see a benefit to add something like for, for RTCs, for example, there's this uh, backup memory um, to have that somehow unified? There was, I, I think there was some PR on the, Memory. Yeah, I think there, there, there are different different kinds of backup memory, right? There are these uh, memory maps, RAM areas that you can just use like normal RAM, and there are these RTC areas that you actually have to write to and read from. So yeah, of course, it would be good to have a, a, a common API for that, but uh, it's different from the backup RAM where you can just write to and use yeah. it as RAM. Okay, the second question was, um, uh, you said that uh, some of your components can actually run from a lower voltage, um, so um, and you can you can power them directly uh, directly from the battery. So is it um, uh, feasible in that case to bypass the um, buck converter or uh, linear regulator inside of the SAMR? I, I saw no, that. No, 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 no. The, 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 these voltage regulators are the reason why we can why they can run from this range of, of uh, voltages. Okay, so it's for the step up, yeah, because uh, I mean, some some support lower voltages actually, so you can save energy if you just provide them with, with uh, the lower voltage if the CPU uh -huh. continues to run at that voltage. Yeah, 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 but but this is, I mean, this this this, uh, I mean, this is internal to the CPU, so um, yeah. Uh. Yeah, I just wanted to say some of them yeah. uh, provide the option that you can by bypass that. All right. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, uh, you, you mean it will be stepped down by the uh, by the uh, voltage regulator, and if, yeah. if it's already. Yeah. I, I don't know if, if if it can actually, or if it maybe detects it automatically. I don't, I don't know. Um, but, yeah. but yeah, I mean, most most MCUs these days have these wide voltage ranges. I'm, I'm I like these the, the uh, NIF A52840. It has actually a range of 1.8 to 5.5 volts, so you can. Power it direct from USB. That's also quite nice, and from from battery. And yeah, be, yeah. but I uh, thought that it would be a nice addition to. Uh, I mean, if your battery at some point only provides like two point two volts or something like that towards the end of the uh, um, lifetime, then you could just feed that in directly without any stepper conversion. Yeah, but, that, but that's what we're doing. Uh, so these these oh, okay. uh, these back converters are inside the MCU. Good. Okay. So this is already yeah. Okay, we have uh, other questions. One from Sam, Samuel online. He asks uh, whether you're using ZTimer and uh, power management layered for power management in the current version of your app. No, we are not using that yet because we yeah we'll just we'll just use the we'll just use uh, PM set zero basically and then go to this backup mode and wake up by RTC. So no runtime power management. Uh, so, and uh, Niels uh, asks, uh, in the same context, if I understood you correctly, you implemented power, power mode and sleep handling yourself without the use of uh, of the tools, right? Uh, well, not really. I mean, we have a, this shutdown function, which shuts down the uh, net network interfaces and sensors because there's nothing in right for that kind of uh, use case yet. Um, we, could, we could probably add that like a shutdown function to each driver. That, uh, I mean, lots of drivers already have that, but there's no unified interface. Mm -hmm. And uh, Niels asks uh, further here, uh, as a follow-up uh, on the chat, uh, if you implement it by yourself, do you think that a low power operation uh, support should be improved in the timer driver so that these are able 
to work seamlessly with power management layered in, in use cases like yours? I, mean, I think this is what, what Jürgen did, right? So the set timer, as I understand, already provides that. Uh, I haven't looked, looked into that. And if, I mean, as in, in backup mode, there uh, are no timers running and the state is lost. So uh, there is not much Riot can do in, in the help with deep sleep because Riot isn't running anymore. You want to add on this, Niels? No, just that thing. Do we have more questions or, or remarks? I have a very short one. Uh, have you tried to bring uh, some thread stacks on the backup RAM so that stacks may survive the backup mode? Mm -hmm. I haven't tried that yet, no. I mean, it would probably be interesting with the with networking because, um, yeah, this uh, this additional uh, round trip uh, is uh, often unnecessary if the node is moved. 